Hello and welcome to the fourth installment of our Explainer Video Tutorial Series. This is Mark Labar at BlenderPassion.com and in this video we're going to be showing you how to finalize and render out your Explainer Video. So here it is, just as we left it from the third part. And we can go ahead and change some of these values. We can change the output folder. I'll go ahead and put it in PNG sequence. And I'll leave it at 15% compression. 100% uses a bit of processing power. And since it's not the finalized product, we'll leave it at that. So let's just see how this looks in the preview panel. Let's try it at one sample. And it does look half decent. Not shabby. Not bad. And that's mostly just because of well, the texture resolution, not the sampling. So it looks decent on one, except the problem comes in when we're using motion blur. Then we'll need to greatly increase the sampling. So even at 10 samples, you can start seeing some distortion there. And there's the distortion. Of course, it looks actually not, not too bad. And looking back on this, I'm actually recording the audio after the video. So I, I do see some problems with what I'm doing here. I'm trying to compare these two different slots, and all I changed was the preview samples and not not the render samples. So you'll just have to bear with me here. So, we'll go ahead and try it at... Well, we'll just see what happens. We'll go ahead and just start animating these samples. The transitions will need more samples and static images less. And of course I wouldn't go through all of these and just try to animate all these little transitions and such. If this is just for demonstration purposes, if I had a laptop in here I would definitely have a few few hundred samples just on the laptop and just a couple of samples on everything else. So we'll go ahead and see what point four samples does for us. And well that doesn't look too good. So we'll go ahead and delete those keyframes. We'll stop animating those samples and of course I deleted the actual transition and this is the part of the video where I figure out what happened and I will undo that. I'll deselect this transition and delete those sample keyframes and there we go we'll try rendering this out and of course I undid my samples. So I'll go ahead and change that right here and see how that looks. Very very smooth but again not many people are going to be able to see that. Very quick, not important transition. Not obvious. So 10 samples is probably decent enough. You might be able to get away with 5, but unless you are really under some heavy time constraints, I would definitely go with around 10. So I'll go ahead and compare the 0.4 with a 0.5 shutter speed just to see what looks what looks better so they're relatively similar but I do think I like the 0.4 shutter speed better so we'll leave it at that and we'll check out the final render options quite honestly spatial splits don't really work in this scenario they do have their uses but I find that those build times take the, well, they give the entirety of the render a whole lot longer. So I'll go ahead and just check the first two up there. And after that, we can go ahead and change the end frame 
to maybe somewhere around 130. So there we go. We'll go ahead and just start rendering it. Control F12 to render an animation. And now that it's done, we can just go ahead and navigate to the right folder. Temp folder and in PNG sequence. And there we have it, all 130 frames of our animation. Actually, I think I'll stay in the same scene here. And we can just go ahead and move this over and create some video sequence editors. Change that to a viewer, move that up, and we can go ahead and shift A, add in our, not a movie, but add in our image. And here, don't follow what I'm doing here, I tried adding, and I just was left with one image. So I'll erase that, and then I'll just go ahead and add in an image again, and we'll select everything with Control A, Add Image Strip. So there it is. I'll go ahead and look at that, and move it back a couple of frames, starting on frame one, and we'll take a look. And there it is. But you can see that, especially in this first frame, all that distortion. I probably would bump the sampling up here, maybe not just for this instance, but for the whole thing actually, instead of just this one instance. But it does look decent, especially in the rest. And another thing, we'll just go ahead and we'll change it to an H.264 and go to encoding and we can mess around with these values here. Go ahead and do some research, see what's best. Codec, I'll put that on H.264 as well. And for format, we'll go ahead and H.264. Of course, then you won't need a codec. So, bitrate, around 7,000, I find works nice. 7,000, 8,000, depending on your video. If there's lots of quick motion, you'll need a faster bitrate. Codec for the audio, if I did have audio, I'd put it at MP3. And then we can go ahead and, well, I guess I'll just leave it at the same output folder. And then, well, after that, we can just go ahead and Control F12 to render out the animation again. Then when that's done, we can just go ahead and navigate to the folder. And there it is. And looking back on this now, the transitions will need to be quicker, because that just doesn't look good right now. So I'd say around 8 frame transitions. And that concludes our tutorial. Please like, subscribe, comment, and thank you for watching.